Before we begin, uh, here's just a little housekeeping. First, it's important to remember that this is not medical advice. I am making this video with the sole purpose of giving you a jumping off point for your own research. Second, be kind to each other in the comments. Everyone's transition looks different, and what works best for you might not be what's best for someone else. Finally, YouTube's algorithm works off a few metrics. Watch time, whether or not you're subscribed, and whether or not you click on to another video from my channel. The best free way for you to support my content creation is to watch the videos all the way to the end, click the like button, and subscribe to my channel. All right, let's get to it. Hey everybody, it's Zach Littercast, and welcome back to my channel, or if it's your first time, welcome here for the first time. Today we're going to be covering a little bit more in depth a phalloplasty surgical option. We're going to be talking about two options which are very similar, ALT and RFF. They're executed similarly. We're going to talk about the pros and cons. We're going to give kind of just a basic overview, cost, who offers it, and then we're going to go in depth and talk about the actual surgical procedure itself or a rendition of it, what it might look like. And uh, yeah, as always, I'm not a medical professional. This is not medical advice. I am just a person with a special interest who wanted to share what I found with you. Without further ado, let's begin. So next we're going to be looking at ALT phalloplasty. This is your anterolateral thigh phalloplasty. This one's incredibly common because, again, it avoids that dreaded forearm scar. And this can actually be conducted in a few different ways. You've got the free flap or the pedicled flap, pedicled meaning it's still attached to its donor site. And then you can also get it with or without the combined forearm procedure, which we'll go into in a moment. Microsurgery is not required if you're going to do the pedicled flap, and it is compatible with urethroplasty and implants. Your results uh, should allow you to stand to void, reasonable ability to penetrate. You should be able to receive sensation. Um, and then there are severe complications possible. Of all of the information that I read about this, the complications for this particular one seem to be more likely than in others, but they're rare. And then your surgery stages over the course of two to three years will be your pre-op, which is your electrolysis, your hair removal, then you've got stage one, which is your vaginectomy, phalloplasty, and scrotoplasty. Again, talk with your surgeon if you don't want to do vaginectomy or scrotoplasty. Those are things that you might be able to even like reduce the price of the surgery because you don't want to do them. Um, stage two, urethroplasty, which might be done in stage one or two or both in two different stages. And then your glansplasty, which again can be done as early as one week after stage one. Then your stage three, which is your testicular implants, which might also be done in stage two. Again, talk to your surgeon, because if you don't want to get the scrotoplasty and you don't want to get the testicular implants, then that might be a more favorable option for you. There are a ridiculous amount of surgeons that offer ALT fallow, like it's one of the most common options. For those of you who are looking into this particular surgery option, I highly recommend checking out these studies as well as just hitting up Google Scholar and typing in the surgical procedure you're interested in learning more about. Look for results, look for what the procedure entails, look for pros and cons, and look for newer stuff. And, you know, as much as the academic community kind of is dismayed by older studies, it, they're still worth looking at. Obviously, you're going to come across some terminology that isn't as culturally sensitive as modern times. So you might come across the word transsexual. You might come across the word uh, biological female, so on and so forth. Take it with a grain of salt. Look at the statistics, and obviously, as with any study, research who wrote it, who participated, because that will give you a lot of value in terms of how much salt you should be taking with that study. So our next topic is RFF phalloplasty. This is radial forearm fa flap phalloplasty. Say that 10 times fast. I know I tried and failed. Um, it is actually the most common. It is compatible with both urethroplasty and prosthesis. 
the results are that you will have visible scarring on your forearm and potentially some loss of sensation, some difficulty in using your hand. You should be able to penetrate, provided you use prosthesis. You should be able to stand avoid, provided you choose to do urethroplasty. And you should be able to receive erogenous sensation via a buried clitoris at the base of the shaft. Your surgery stages for this typically follow the ATL surgery stages, and the costs are comparable. And there are a significant number of surgeons who offer this, uh, pretty much equivalent to the number of surgeons who offer ATL. If you're looking to do some research on what this is, what it looks like, pros and cons, these are some of the studies that I recommend reading. Um, again, it's really important to kind of ignore the title in these. If you feel the words don't apply to you, that's fine. Focus on the anatomy, focus on what it is that you want to achieve, what risks you're willing to accept, and focus on listening to the reports from people who have gone through these surgeries. The RFF and ALT procedure is relatively the same, including the construction of a urethra via the tube within a tube method. Both have the option for urethral lengthening as well as uh, prosthesis. However, of note, RFF has a lower risk of complication with urinary development, whereas ALT has a higher rate of urinary and other complications than RFF. Stage one of the planned delayed ALT flap phalloplasty is performed in the following way. Preoperative hysterectomy in which the uterus is removed and the vagina is left intact is completed before the surgery. Thigh hair removal is also completed in advance to limit hair growth inside of the neuro neurourethra after phalloplasty. A 22 cm wide by 16 cm long ALT flap is marked starting 5 cm cephalad to the upper ridge of the patella, centered over the line created by the lateral patellar edge and the anterior superior iliac spine, per classical description of the ALT pedicle. Doppler ultrasound is used to locate and mark the location of expected perforators preoperatively, usually while the patient is awake. No other radiology techniques are used to locate perforators. During surgery, all edges except the proximal edge of the planned ALT flap are incised, and the blood supply of the flap is isolated, save for a few perforators. The proximal edge is left unincised to limit subsequent edema of the flap after delay. After this point, the flap is closed and two suction drains are placed and are later removed when their daily output falls below 20 cubic centimeters per day. Simultaneous vaginectomy is completed during stage one by a second operating team when desired. After a healing period of six months, stage two of planned delayed pedicled ALT phalloplasty is performed using a standard tube within a tube method for urethral creation. A benefit of delaying the ALT flap is that partial flap necrosis, usually of the flap edge, can occur relatively harmlessly, as necrotic tissues can then be excluded from the subsequently created phallus. Thank you so much for watching, for listening, and I hope this was educational. As always, hit that like button, share it with your friends, leave a comment, tell me what you want to see me cover, and if you're not already, please subscribe. Um, your subscriptions, your likes, your shares, even how long you watch my videos for plays a huge factor in whether or not YouTube recommends them. So I really appreciate your participation in this viewing experience. I'll talk to you later.